Hi, and welcome to uh, this week's episode of Talking About. Our guest this week is really something of an enigma because she's been around for a very long time, but to look at her, you'd think she was maybe just out of school or something like that. Put her in a school uniform and you'd think, oh, she's a senior at school. But no, she's been around almost forever. I have known her for a long time. Um, Malaysian public have known her for a long time. What does she do? She's a director. She's a philanthropist. She's a, what else does she do? She's a, she's a entrepreneur. She's an actor. Uh, she's a corporate figure. My God, she's almost done everything. And yet she continues to look amazing and to be amazing. She's one of, I think, Malaysia's power women. So say hello to Nai Yuan. Hi. Hi, I'm oh. so honored oh, you to are. be introduced like that Not well. by Joe Hashem. No, like, but it's wow. true. It's very true because as I was saying to you earlier, I mean, I know you as you. You know, I, I've direct, I directed you in a play yes. many years ago yeah, yeah. And, and then we've had a lot of dealings in terms of Kaki Sini, but I've never known you as this hotshot film director. When well, it's all... not hot shot, to be honest. You know, well, it is. You've won several awards. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah, but you've won several awards. Yeah. And, and how? Very, when did yeah. you start? Um, actually, my first uh, film, which is a short film, was uh, actually back in two thousand and two, two thousand and three. Mm -hmm. um, it was back then, way back then. Yeah. And what um, was it? It was Do called The World, My World. The world is my world. No, your world my world oh your world my world that's and that's not that is not the uh the 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 film oh yes it is and that's you got i've got two awards for that you won two uh, awards yes, what were the, the awards uh it's the best film yes best shot at that point and yes. also the audience choice award audience choice in award. singapore yeah. right now have you always wanted to be a director <sighs> i think i've always wanted to be an actor but I've never gotten a lot of roles that could really be challenging to me. I've always played secretary, the sister, <laughs> the friend, you know, or the girl who's stuck in the toilet forever. Oh, really? Yeah, I cameo a lot. <laughs> I acted in so many titles, but it was never the lead. It was ah. hardly even the supporting lead. Um, it's always, you just don't look the role or you just look so different or this is not your look. It's not how the director imagined it. Right. So there's very little space to play with. So after a while, instead of complaining or feeling down or upset, I decided, Kila, let's make some stories myself. And that's what I do. And now that you're doing that, or have been doing it for quite a while, yeah. have you ever thought that, ah, oh, now that I'm actually producing and directing these films, I can be the lead. Have you ever thought of that? No. No, huh? No. I think it's very different. So if when... When you're producing, you work with a team of people because you mm -hmm. cannot produce it yourself. So you work with a team of people and you are supported and motivated and validated by a team of people. Your right. good work is validated by them. But when you're a director, the start, when you start becoming a little uh, unsure. There's a lot of doubts come creeping sometimes mm -hmm. if you are challenged on the set, for example, by the director of photography. Um, and they just say, no, I'm not sure if this shot works. And you're already, hey, hmm, I don't know. I'm Do you sure. mean they say things like that to you? Well, they can. They should. Really? Yeah, they should. Is that right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They should. They, should. they would never dare say that to me. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. No, anyway, no, sorry. <laughs> I mean, so, I'm only joking. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so then, but an actor, an actor is, um, there's just so much more stress and pressure. Uh, and it's you. Yes, people can help you be better, but you need to be good first. Mm. And having done producing and directing, and directing myself is something I will never do. Mm. Never. Because I, I think I could only deal with so much stress yeah, of a production yeah. at any that's one time. Very, very sensible attitude. Actually, all of these, all these people who think that they can act and direct at the same time, direct themselves, they're really kidding themselves. Because it's, well, a, very, it's a very difficult no, process. Very difficult process. Um, I, I was wondering, with all of these, all of these films, how many films have you made? 
Have you directed? Uh, let me think. Uh, it's not a lot. I could count it in, in, in one hand for films. Um, maybe shorts, I've done like eight. And mm -hmm. um, long feature, maybe four. Okay. Um, and But I've done so much more work for television. Mm. Um, maybe 40 different titles. How many? 40. Four zero. Yeah, if not more. Um, oh. Whatever that I could remember. Yes. Um, and then it's all series, right? So it could be four seasons or five seasons of work. Ah, ah. Um, but that's considered one title, right. for example. You're, so. you're working on a series at the moment? Yes, at the moment. And yes. what, can you talk about it or is it hush-hush? No, I can talk about it. Yeah. I, uh, it's called Sayap Bagi Mu. Uh, so right. it's like my wings for you. Yes. Um, it, is it in Malay? It's in Malay. Actually, all of my work, except for the films, they're all in Malay. Hey, hello, you want it to China? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come you do Bahasa Melayu? Because I'm comfortable with that language. Are you really? I am, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I maybe we should have this uh, interview in Malay? Boleh je. So I will ask for Rita to come in and sit in and <laughs> interview. Boleh juga. Yes, can, yes, huh? Okay. Can, can, no. yeah. Okay, so from, you, you said you've always wanted to be an actor. Uh, if, you had, if you had your brothers, what would you choose? Would you choose acting? or producing and directing? Hmm. So now that I've tried everything, I definitely like producing the most. Mm. The most. Right. Um, uh, you actually get a sense of making things happen from the onset. That means from the beginning, from the seed of an idea, mm -hmm. you can take that and make it happen. Right. As compared to an actor who is really much later down the stream and then as compared to director, for example, who right. actually may not have so much creative freedom. Huh. compared to, say, um, a producer who also understands creative process. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I just take a sidestep from you at the moment? And can I ask you a question about the state of Malaysia at the moment in terms of COVID and what your feelings are and what your thoughts are and what, how you are coping with it and are you coping with it? And what effect is it having on you personally? Okay. Um, I think the pandemic has been, uh, um, to me, I view it as a blessing um, for a lot of people, for myself, to uh, pause and to reevaluate what's important mm -hmm. and to be really grateful and really blessed and very thankful for the things that we already have. We are often times going after things that we forget we already have a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and we're just not taking stock of them properly. Okay. Um, so the pandemic, I'm grateful for that time to reflect um, and also that time to cultivate better work culture with the team, um, to work closer with the team and understanding that perhaps um, uh, there are more exceptions in the role than we actually do imagine uh, around us. Um, I feel, I, I sit on this uh, committee that advise um, uh -huh. the government mm. uh, about community relief when it comes to uh, the pandemic, when it comes to COVID-19. Um, so we are working on a lot of stuff on ground as well. So we have been um, uh, giving out food, we have been giving out aid, we have been talking about how to best make sure communications from the government reach the different kind of segments of people in language, in the way we say things, mm -hmm. how do they understand it better? How do we reach out to them? Are they looking at phones? Is it WhatsApp? Is it SMS? How do we reach them so that they can understand what vaccination means for them? Uh, what stay at home mean for them? Um, social distancing is really a privilege. Um, it's really a privilege. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have this privilege to distance themselves from another person because the house is too small, there's only that room where there's mm. seven people inside, for example. Um, it, it's quite frightening, actually. Yes, it is. Especially when you're on ground and you see it happen. Yes. Um, but I'm also very blessed to be able to contribute um, at the national level where I can tell them, hey, we need to pay attention here. Mm. And I understand your shortcoming, but we need to do this now and here. And look, this is not important. Can we go to another point that's a lot more important? Mm. What about this, for example? Mm. So those are things that I'm able to do, and I feel really blessed. Yes, good. Allowed to do it. Good, good. Uh, what about the effect that it's having on um, the, the the mental effect that it's having on people? You know, the the, uh, the the social effect, the mental effect, the 
the, the way people are reacting to it, and sometimes the way people are negatively reacting to it and getting angry about it. What do you think about all that? I had this conversation just yesterday with Nikki Chong. Uh -huh. uh, I'm sure we all know. Yes. Uh, Nikki Chong is now in UK, and he just got his doctorate, and he's uh, teaching. Um, and uh, he was telling me about how we need to look at this as we may all be in the storm, same storm together, mm -hmm. but we're all in different boats. And because we're in different boats, we may not understand each other's boats. Hmm. We do not understand how we are taking to different things. You so mean our little Nikki said this to you? Yes. My goodness. He's, he's not so little anymore. I know, I know. He's now a doctor and, and yes. I mean all of those things. Yes. But it's hard to imagine Nikki sort of sprouting such words of wisdom. But do yeah. you often communicate with him? We you do. do. Quite a fair bit. We catch yeah. up quite a fair bit. We make it a point to at least every two months once. Oh, good. Good. And, um, and, um, and I understood again, from the point of a privileged position, that there are just so many more different minds that we don't understand, mm. but we take it for, we, we, sort of, we sort of push a lot of things um, away and say, right. you just got to be stronger. Everybody go, is going through the same thing. Why? I can do it and you can't. So we've got to stop saying those things yes. and we got to listen a little bit more and also understand that, you know, um, going to school online, for example, education online, mm -hmm. is not as simple as just because you're doing it, the, re the, the reception will be the same, the learning will be the same, yes. is not the same. Yeah. And you have to understand that perhaps it's really not so easy for little children or, or, or any persons to go online and to want to take the additional step to be engaged with a screen mm. and not see their friends um, and not know... Um, uh, the consequence and of, of course many people don't have the advantage of being able to go online yes correct yeah. or sharing the yes. platforms for example yes, yes. and you know the lines are bad yeah. um, and or you you get some of the messaging you don't get the rest your teacher is upset with you mm. because the teacher themselves are not equipped well enough mm. um, technology wise and knowing how to use a lot of right. different things and managing a class of 40 for example and getting everybody to just mute yes or unmute at any one time and yeah. getting responses and asking a question and nobody's answering and it's switch nightmarish. on your camera, please switch on your camera <laughs> now. You know, I think you yes. know, we need to understand this is a completely different uh, expectation we need to draw. Mm. Um, different way we need to rethink communication. Yeah. So all these things are not yet in place. Sure. And adding on the worries of, so do we get vaccination or not? Mm. Is, is that you know the thing for us now so do i sign up uh, do i sign up again on my suggestion or not um you have all this and yes. all yes. kinds of conversation or scares because you know you can share things so easily now but you don't think about what you're sharing right um uh is it just fake news or is it something yeah. for you to consider and think about mm. what is the context of things that you're sharing let me ask you let me ask you something um i mean obviously you're a, you're a very bright young woman yeah, no, you are. You're very bright. Uh, but what is it you think about you that makes you so wanted or needed in terms of consultation for the, for the government bodies or any other areas? What is it about you? What's, what's the special thing about Nai Yuan? I think I'm open mm -hmm. um, to, uh, um, to ideas. I'm open and I can reinterpret a lot of different energy and conversation in the same room right. and put it out again properly. I, I mean, I can communicate that after I understand the dynamic, for example, and what right. they're trying to say. And I can communicate that better, not just to the group, but also outside externally. Mm. So that's one strength. I also think I'm a, I'm a really cool team player. So okay. I know... When something needs to be done, I'll jump in and I'll just go do it. Um, or I'm not afraid because I really think at the end of the day, I have nothing to lose. Um, uh, as in, I'm not afraid to be foolish or to be seen saying silly things, whichever. Right. Um, because that's not important to me. Yeah, I think um, humility has a lot to do with it. No, really, I do. I think, I think when, when someone is humble to a certain degree, 
They don't mind making mistakes. They don't mind people thinking, who the hell does he think he is? You know? But you know, humility and humbleness is not something you actually get. You, no. you, you, it's a process. Yes, of course. And it's something I never got when I was maybe in my 20s. Mm. And I'm so upset. I think my biggest fail in my life for me has always been my 20s. I always view my 20s as I've done so much, but I always felt like I've not gotten far enough. Mm. And I'm pushing every day. But um, uh, Well, maybe that's the secret to your success is that you are forever, no matter what you achieve, you feel you can achieve more and mm. you can do more. No but matter someone what. once said to me that was a bit too, um, too tama, uh, like you want everything, like uh, you, it's not enough. Um, but for me, you're right, it's being ambitious. Yes, yes. It's not about... Ambition is not a bad thing, you know. I know, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing, especially when that ambition is used to do good, you know, and to spread the word, which is what you do. I mean, you do it in many other areas. For instance... I can't remember the name of the group, but you, you, you head up an organization for women. Yes, Women yeah. Girls. What's it called? It's called Women Girls. Right, Women <laughs> Girls, yeah. Well, and it has is... a long name, like for Pertubuhan Pembangunan Kendiri Wanita dan Gadis, but we just simplify okay. it as Women Girls. And what, do you, what, what is the main purpose of this group? Um, uh, two things, really. Uh, we want to remind women that you, you are a role model, and therefore mm -hmm. you have a role to play. Um, a lot of girls are watching you from afar without you realizing, so... You need to walk the talk so that they can live better than you. And it's right. very important for every woman to remember that because sometimes you forget. Um, and then to the girls, we want to tell them to please live your potential. And if you don't understand what your potential is today, it's okay. Live to the fullest today. Maybe tomorrow you will understand, ah, the potential I want today will be this. Mm. And then the next day you push again and see what happens. So right. we want to tell every girl um, as much as possible to find your potential. But does this and work not... in the Does this work in the guise of an NGO? Is it an NGO? Or... Yes, it's an it NGO. is. It yes. is. Yes. And do, do do you have members or how does it work? Um, so in the NGO, what we do is that we just basically we well, we work like an organization where we hire people and we go okay. on the ground. Yes. We understand what the problem is and then we prototype solutions to solve it. Right. And once we know a certain, uh, a certain solution has its way, we will then um, either present that um, idea or that you know, solution to either the government or to oh, the corporates okay. and get them to sponsor the things that's necessary to so make that it's, happen. It's a holistic thing. It's not, it's not as if uh, I'm, a, I'm a troubled young lady and I go to you. Is it that as well? No. We don't do that. You don't do that. We basically connect them to ah, the so right organization, right. sure, okay. and we bring, say, for example, um, other women organization in that specific space, mm -hmm. like if you're talking about abuse or physical or mental health, then we'll bring those organizations into the school or with this girl, right. so that this girl can get the help that she needs. Right. But we do larger stuff. So we look at, say, for example, why aren't girls getting um, as much uh, um, uh, care or um, attention uh, when they drop out of school? So we mm -hmm. try to understand what the issue is. Is yes. it the school? Is it the surrounding? Is it the homes that they stay in? Is it their parents? What is it? We'll find out. And actually, every single uh, space, like uh, the, the, the place that you stay in, they will, they will actually hold answers to why the girls grow up the way they do. Right. And right. we will try and find ways to break those barriers for them, for them to re-communicate what they want or at the very minimum, give them the options if you do fail. For example, if your marriage didn't work, mm. now that you marry at the age of 18... Have you ever thought of running work. as Prime Minister? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you should. You, you, no, really, you should. I've been trying to do that ever since I was nine years old in school. Ah. I put that in the paper when they say, what's your ambition? I'm like, oh, Prime Minister. Madonna Menteri. Yeah, and yeah, it gets yeah. like, Lao Nga Yuan, cannot. <laughs> what? You cannot become Prime Minister. Why? You're a girl and you're not. Oh, was that in the Constitution? The Prime Minister has to be a male? No, but the second point of why it can't be, because I'm not Malay and I'm not Muslim. Ah, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully one day that will not be an issue anymore. Well, you never know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. If yeah. But, you know, speaking of being Malay and Muslim and Indian and Chinese, uh, Farida recently went for her injection, her, her, her vaccination, and 
it was the most wonderful experience. I mean, everyone there, all the workers, all the frontliners, they're all colorblind. They don't care whether you're Malay, Chinese, Indian, line line, whatever. You know, they are they were so helpful and so considerate and so and, and so warm and friendly. I'm going there tomorrow. I hope that it's going to be okay as well. But still, enough of that. But no, I just wanted to, you know, pick up on that thing about about uh, not being Malay. Uh, hopefully, you know, we can all hope and pray that one day we will develop enough to be able to say we're not Chinese, we're not Malay, we're not Indian. I think we it's are, really we are Malaysian. About exposure, right? I yes. think the frontliners have worked with so many different people that they become blind after a true. while. True, true. And um, the people who are commenting racially mm. online have never seen other people in their lives. That's right. That's the problem. Yeah. So if you have, um, I mean, we make sure, and I and I think this is an active making sure mm. that um, the board you are in or the uh, uh, company that you're in are made up of different kinds of background, mm. not just diversity. Race. Yes, not just race, not just age, not just ability, yeah. but yes. also different thinking, different school, different states. Mm -mm -mm. When you get people together like that and understand mm. their point of view, you'll be surprised mm. at how much you didn't know and how right. ignorant you have been. Sure. There are so many things I need to talk to you about, and unfortunately we have limited time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll along. Um, can we talk a little bit about your, your venture into the world of, of, of corporate, into the corporate world? What, how did that come about and why did it come about and was it something you've always wanted to do? Um, I, I was, I, at that point, uh, that was in 2007, mm. uh, I was maybe running, say, five to six productions a day. And I was producing five to six and maybe directing one of the five to mm -hmm. six. So I worked maybe 14 to 18 hours a day, maybe sleep for four hours or whatever. Right. But I didn't get the sense that, um, and I was very young. I was maybe I was younger. Younger <laughs> than what you are now, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I was maybe just hitting 30. And I was thinking to myself that, oh my goodness, now I'm 30 and I'm doing this. So what would I be doing at 40? Does it mean I have to double what I'm doing? So if I'm doing five, six production now and I'm dying, does it mean that at 40 years old, I should be doing 10 to 20? So it didn't make sense. Mathematically, it didn't make sense to me at all. Right. So if I don't do 10 to 20 productions by the time I'm 40, then where is my growth? I don't understand. How else can I grow? How mm. else can I be better? Does that mean I have to move to a different country, for example? I have all those questions. So when the opportunity... You are an overachiever, aren't you? Uh, yes. Ambition. Yes, yes, as well. <laughs> And then, so when the opportunity came by, it was, a, it was a really nice opportunity. I was just walking through uh, the office, uh, someone, a client's office, and the CEO was just standing in the doorway, and he just went like, you, 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 I need to talk to you. I want you to work with me. And that's how it started. That's it. Wow. Wow. Just someone who and is it was able to give me a chance. And it was something that you immediately accepted? Yes. It was. On the spot, immediately. Oh. Because right. I feel, um, okay, first and foremost, I have got a really simple principle in life, which is never say no. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me to do anything, I usually come back with a yes. Right. No, actually, I'll come back with a yes, anytime. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, second, if you don't understand it, all the more you should say yes. Yeah. Because that's when you learn. Right. And if you say yes to things, if you say no to things you are afraid of, then you will never grow. Mm. What is the point? So you've got to say yes to things that you're like, oh, what? That's when right. crazy things So it happen. was a wonderful learning experience. Amazing. I love it. Right. Right. And I think it is also because of my corporate experience mm. that allowed me to uh, understand so many more different concepts and how the world works mm. and also bring that into... Uh, so the way I run NGOs and the way other NGOs are run is completely different. I'm not afraid of scale, mm. whereas a lot of NGOs are afraid of scale. They, they cannot understand how we can do things nationwide mm -hmm. um, or how we can get to so many more people, sure. thousands of people a year, for example. They, they will never plan that way. They are planning our planning is completely different. Um, and it's but also... But that's partly because of you as well. It's not just your corporate training. That's you, the individual. 
Maybe. No, I'm not sure. maybe. You know, you're being you're being very modest. That is partly you. I don't know. I I like. To, I know. I like... I'm telling you. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I sit on board. And because of um, obviously my experience um, on ground and I'm wanting to learn as I go and exposure to all kinds of different businesses. Um, and then I'm invited to sit on boards as well. Mm -hmm. And sitting on boards then gave me a different point of view about running businesses, which is uh, the governance side of things, mm -hmm. which we don't have because it's not, we don't learn in schools, sure. legality of businesses, contracts and finance. So what is the basic understanding you mm -hmm. should have? Um, those are stuff that a lot of entrepreneurs need to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. But why? We should have all this in school. Why mm -hmm. we study history? Mm -hmm. But study history if the context is correct, for yes. example. So yeah. it's all these things yeah. that... So with like, your entrepreneurial skills, is that something you picked up along the way? Or is that something that, that was embedded in you somewhere along the line? Or Actually, I never really uh, sort of... I never really um, thought that I was an entrepreneur. To really, it's always about what I'm trying to do, and you right. just do whatever you can to so just get to it. So it comes naturally to you. Um, I'm, I'm getting a five-minute wind up. So let me, let me move on to to uh, something that's very dear to my heart and for Rita's heart, and also to your heart, I'm sure. And that's Kakisini. Can we can we talk about Kakisini and how you became involved? Because initially. Many, many moons ago when Farida and I were involved in helping them set it up initially, and then it went through change, and then suddenly this dynamo in the name of Nai Yuen came along and sort of totally changed the whole face of it, uh, for the better, for the better. Uh, how did you get involved and why did you? More importantly, yes, how, but more importantly, why? Um. When Kakisini first came out, I think it was 20, uh, 20, 2001. Mm. Um, and I was... Um, a baby. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I remember that I was featured a lot on kakisini.com. Mm. Uh, and because I was featured a lot, that's also how I got a lot more work on stage. Yes. And I really love working on the stage. Uh, I just don't find enough time to do it. Mm. I, I love it because it's raw, it's... You are really learning the energy. I, I learn how to absorb energy if I don't have enough. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I learn how to give the right amount out um, to, at meetings so that mm. you know they feel you, the warmth. How do you do it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I learn all that from theater, um, and I always felt like I owe it to Kakisani to 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 do something for it in the okay. future. And I've won awards um, from Cameroonian mm. Arts Awards as well. And um, so I've always thought. I got to do something. So when I heard that they were going to um, close it, and I felt, no, 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 this is a brand, if anything, that has yeah. got so much more to offer, and you cannot just stop here. So I mm. just went up to Jenny and yes. Kathy and tell them, do you want to consider letting me run it? Mm. So that's the beginning. Right. So and the idea was to really, okay, maybe not now let it die. is my, yeah, not let it die, and my turn to give back. Right. So that's really why. Wonderful. And you've done it in such a, a wonderful way because you, mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I mentioned in, your, in the introduction to you that you are also something of a philanthropist, you know, uh, and, and uh, it, it, for such a young person to be what you are is really truly inspiring. It must inspire a lot of people. And I mean, Kaki Sini, through you, have become has become very philanthropic in terms of the performing arts. You know, we have benefited from it. Uh, uh, Short and Sweet benefits from it uh, in, w through your generosity, and I'm sure many other organizations also benefit from it. Is that something that when you took up the role, is that something that you envisioned that you would be doing or that Kakisini would be doing? So philanthropy is not at all in my dictionary. Uh, as in, like, it's not, we're not, okay, philanthropy for me is always like charity, right? But we never imagine that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're doing it because it's necessary. That's okay. all. Period. We're not doing it out of whatever goodness. That's not what it is. Okay, let's, really, let's forget semantics, okay? But we're let's doing talk it because about, it's necessary. let's talk about, yes, let's talk about what you're doing and why you're doing it and how you're doing it. Uh, 
uh, uh, so it's really simple. You get business in, and mm -hmm. then oh, we have extra money. All right, who needs it? Mm -hmm. Let do it together. Okay, that's really how it is. Very it's good. really very simple. Right. It's it's almost something like a foundation, really, isn't it? Is well, it? we don't have that much money. No, so but it's like, like a foundation. foundation. It's almost like a foundation. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot more freedom to do a lot of stuff that we want to do. All right. Um, but the idea here is always how do we uh, go it to be better? Mm -hmm. um, and it really depends on the the team that I have, that yes. I've assembled. So with different people, then they bring in a different you kind have of some, energy. You have some good people, actually. I do, yeah. I do, I do. Can I, can I, I, I need to ask you two very quick questions, all right? First question is, um, of all the things that you do, what gives you the most joy? Tough, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I couldn't yeah. answer that question if someone asked me that. There are so many different things. But is there something that really stands out to you? I love mothering. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I mean, to mention you're a mother yes, and yes. a wife, of course. Yes. So, yeah. mother more. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love that bit. And I think I've never learned so much um, in all my other roles compared to if I'm a mother, when I'm okay. a mother. All right. um, and I think I am a lot nicer because I'm a mother. Okay. My, my, well, yeah, I think maybe you have changed. Certainly you've changed over the years. My final question is, um, what is it that you would say to any young woman who believes she has what it takes to succeed? What advice can you offer any young woman out there? Just go do it. Whatever it, it you is. You know, you just sound like Farida. Just really? go do it. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> if you don't do, you never know. Yeah. So when, only when you do, you open more doors. And okay. only when you take that step forward, you're able to see the rest of the picture or the rest of the tunnel or a little bit more of where you're going. Okay. If you don't move forward, then you're always stuck in the same place and just yakking about it. So okay. don't talk, just do and do a lot, as much as you can, because you never know which one is going to come back to validate what you're trying to do. You really don't know. So it's like you're, you're farming. You don't just plant one tree. You plant a lot of trees, right? Okay. And maybe a lot of different kinds of trees, because some trees will grow better in that land and some trees don't. And then you have got to learn from it and, and do, you know, or decide the next thing that you want to do with that piece of land. But if you don't plant, if you don't try, it's never going to happen. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Now, Yuan, it's been an absolute pleasure because you have, you have revealed certain things about yourself that I even didn't know, and I've known you for a very long time. You're my guru. Oh, you know, you're thank you, thank you. I'm honored. No, no, I no, no. Mutual from. admiration society. But no, 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 thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. being thank with us. Thank you so much. And that was Talking About with Na Yuan. See you again next week. Bye-bye.